I think sometimes the, the public authorities that are in charge of this country underestimate just how angry and upset people are about the failures that are going on around them. When we say you are thought politicized things, what we are saying is stop talking when we are eating. When they call the roll call on Senate, on MCA, on MP, do not know whether to answer present or not guilty. The churches are beginning to say we don't want politicians to come and speak in our churches. That's a positive thing. We have got daily revelations of corruption against which there has not been much um, tangible action. So the question then being raised logically is whether um, whatever political commitment is, uh, is claimed to exist against corruption can be translated into, into practical action against uh, corruption. We want this to be a conversation that is sustained that every day we are actually having conversations on actions, strategies, because nobody else is going to formulate a strategy in the war on corruption other than us, you and I, right? To the same officer, corruption. But you can put it in the Gazette, in Yumbani, in our vernacular languages. There are very few where you have corruption. Because in our, many of our communities, it was not, people were not, uh, that corruption was not there. Lakini ukiwa, ukiwa bia mutu mwizi, watu wanashika. It is obvious that corruption affects all manner of rights, civil, political, economic, social and cultural. Uh, because, uh, as has been said before, it, it, it creates a situation in which citizens no longer believe or no longer trust in institutions, they are in despair, and they, they no longer feel as if even what is being said that is being done to them is benefiting them. <laughs> Then it's better when you put a woman in an age, you are not near, a guy, a parent, you are not a hat for one, for a machine. No money was lost. It's not an accident of grace. Yeah? The purpose of that vernacular is to create the impression that corruption only happens when money is lost. Yeah? If no money has been lost, corruption hasn't occurred. Everything is okay. We are doing development. So, if projects are conceived of a tract to divert water, for instance, uh, so that it can benefit uh, projects uh, owned by important people, or which important people want to do, no money has been lost. So that's not corruption. Na jana msikitisha na kuchekesha pia kwa wakati mmoja ni kwamba mtoto yote chini ya miaka mitano ilikuwa anapata matibabu ya bure hata x-ray. Sasa mimi nililipa shilingi 300 kwa hasara. Hapo nilazimisha nilitoa mimi nikitaka huduma ya nini? Ya haraka. Nilikwenda hasara mtoto alikuwa matibabu yake ilikuwa ni ya bure. Nilijua na mchinga. The corrupt wherever they may be are not children of God. They are our brothers, they are our sisters. We are the people who elect these people to office. We have to hold our leaders, the governors, the MPs, to account for the money they have been given. Right now, I think there is a division of the High Court, which was created in, uh, in June this year, that is specifically dealing with anti corruption. We intend, uh, once we have uh, quite a number of magistrates, because we are also limited, there are only less than 400 magistrates in, in the 
uh, in the country to have magistrates that are exclusively dealing with anti-corruption cases. On the issue of the whistleblower protection, this is an important one. What I think might have missed, been missed is that the whistleblower protection bill is just a bill. It is not a law yet. So, as a sign of moving forward, perhaps what we should be looking at are the timelines to put this whistleblower protection law in place so that those who speak against corruption can do so without fear of intimidation. We consider ourselves more responsive, and I can give the name of my office at 10th floor of Cooperative Bank Billy that I can give my number and say that you can you can maybe contact you can contact Mary Waira. Then the witness protection agency, we are linking the whistleblower to the witness protection agency, which already exists, because the witness protection agency is part of the task force. That's the only way out of corruption. I think sometimes the, the public authorities that are in charge of this country underestimate just how angry and upset people are about the failures that are going on around them. So if nothing else, I hope uh, the idea that people are angry and are concerned, very deeply concerned about their country, I think that has been clearly communicated. I'm seeing some positive signs recently. Uh, of the kind of social sanction that David is talking about, which works very well with us as Africans. Of the churches are beginning to say we don't want politicians to come and speak in our churches. That's a positive thing, where the religious leaders, who we respect, begin to say we don't want this money. And I wish they could do a lot more of that, uh, because I think that, that would have a major impact um, on the issue of corruption. If they begin sanctioning those who they know are thieves from contributing to them uh, even more. It will have a much more powerful effect. Every year we have seen various categories of people given uh, the Grand Moran, the Elder of the Burning Spear and even um, other accolades. We have yet to see one event where we have actually acknowledged a whistleblower or somebody who has fought corruption and paid the price for this. So the Integrity Awards that we now give every year is an attempt to redress that problem. So what I'd like to do very quickly is to identify six, six individuals who over the course of 2016 have stood firm. Lucy has continued to fight for transparency and the disbursement of funds in the Transoya County Youth Circle. With her effort, the youth circle has grown to a 50 million shilling, 15 million shilling equity over the last three years. Honor her by giving her a round of applause. <laughs> Winnie has worked on issues of advocacy for justice, women's economic empowerment, gender-based violence, and she's particularly passionate about young girls. She's a representative of the Busia County to the World March of Women. She is also a young African leader. And she came, to, she came to our attention when she went and took on a police officer who had been accused of defiling a 15-year-old girl in Kiambu. These protests did not come without a cost. She was locked up with eight of her colleagues and today we honor her for her courage and for her stand for justice. In 2015, Wanjeri was physically, viciously attacked for running an online campaign to expose the corruption in Mumia's sugar parastato. Despite the beating, despite the injuries, she continued to champion for equal rights for all. And many of you know her for the campaign she's running to free some of our men from uh, our Kenyans who were arrested and charged without due process in Sudan. She has done more for them than the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Bernard Mushere, certified financial examiner and president or chairman of the Associated 
Association of Certified Fraud Examiners of Kenya. He has worked in the government for 33 years. For 26 years, he was in the area of internal audit. He has been known for exposing corruption in the area of construction, not just in terms of the Hola, Gas and Road, but also embassies in Dar es Salaam, Abuja, Nigeria, Islamabad, and South Africa. This man has kept our interests on behalf of the country. Please congratulate him. Bonnie Person is, of course, award winning Kenya for the gentleman's one of our most famous. He is also a human rights activist. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the next round of Integrity Champions 2016. Congratulations!